Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm hanging out in my gaming room and I want to talk about the Dreamcast. I'll be making a follow-up video on my previous video about the GDMU and things I wish I had known before getting into it. Uh, today I will be making a correction to what I've said in that video and I'll also go ahead and show you how to set up your SD card for the GDMU which, uh, which a couple people have requested. So, this is my uh, this is my Asian Dreamcast. I'm going to be talking about my European Dreamcast. Let me quickly take off the top of it. Now, in my previous video, I've stated that using a 12 volt fan should be sufficient load to keep the 12 volt rail busy in the Dreamcast, so that the, uh, the power supply doesn't overheat because removing the disk drive causes the 12 volt rail to go too hot. But uh, yeah, we can just basically put a load on it and uh, keep it busy. But unfortunately, it turns out a fan is not good enough. Even though it's you know it's a DC motor just like the uh, the disk drive, it's uh, not sufficient. And I started having issues with the Dreamcast a couple months ago, and I narrowed it down to the power supply just being you know not and not having any load on the 12 volt rail. So I ended up adding the uh, the, the resistor to it in the end that I actually mentioned in the video as well. But if you don't want to install a fan, just use a resistor. Turns out that I have to use a fan and the resistor to keep it happy. Ever since I've done that modification, it's been working fine. So as you can see, I've actually installed a 6 centimeter fan in the back, which keeps the whole system pretty cool. Um, originally, it was getting a little bit hot without a fan. And with this fan, I can even close the, uh, the case just fine. Uh, I mean, you know, put the, put the top of it on. Previously I had just an 8 centimeter fan, just for show, but uh, that with that I would not be able to close the system. So as you can see it just closes perfectly. So even though the fan is facing downwards on the on the metal shield, it there are some vents in the back where you can feel that there is some air moving out. and. The system is obviously not airtight, so there is some air getting in, and uh, it does cool down the system significantly. So the cooling is perfectly fine of this system with the extra added fan. And now, basically, just gonna show you a close-up on how I've installed the uh, the resistor. So here's a close-up look of the resistor I've used. Basically, just jammed it between the 12 volt rail and the ground. Uh, it doesn't matter which ground you're using; uh, they're all the same. So this is a 300 ohm resistor, it's quarter of a watt, so 0.25 watts should be just fine. Uh, the system's been working fine ever since. So here's an even closer look of the power supply connector. Now this is very important, you have to install this resistor to not have any issues with the Dreamcast. If you don't install it, you're going to have all kinds of problems such as... Uh, Stuttering audio when you boot up the system, the LED will flicker on the GDMU, you could even damage the system, so make sure that you install this resistor. You could also remove the 12 volt rail, but I don't recommend doing that, it's kind of messy, and I like to keep the power supply stock. So basically just jam in this resistor right here, this is a 300 ohm, quarter of a watt, or you know, 1 slash 4 watt. Uh, resistor, you have to jam it between the 12 volt rail and ground. Now, this polarity doesn't matter for this one, it's just a resistor. You can even see, probably you can see some of the writings on here. It says 5 volts there, it says 3.3 volts here. This is the 3.3 volt rail. This is the 5 volt rail, the second one. Third, fourth, and fifth are all ground, so these three are all ground, so it doesn't matter which one you connect one of the leads to, it just has to be between one of the grounds and the last one, 12 volts. So as you can see, I mean it might move around a little bit, but it doesn't really matter, it's gonna stay there, it's gonna make good contact. So again, resistor between 12 volts and ground. These are the vents I've been talking about that supply a bit of air movement in the case. So I just have the fan mounted right here, as you could see, and it just clears the GDMU. Now I highly advise you to install some kind of an extra fan or cooling to, to keep everything nice and cold because uh, the system does get quite warm. It might just survive without an extra fan, but uh, I really recommend installing something. 
But before I show you the process of how to set up your SD card, let's talk SD cards a little bit. Um, you can use any size really. Um, I'm currently using a 256GB SD card in my GDMU and it's working fine, it's quick. And uh, I've got a lot of storage to, uh, to place games on it. For this demonstration I'll just be using a 4GB SD card. It's a class 4 uh, Kingston. Make sure you use a fairly fast one. So probably class 10 is the best to use, but uh, for this demonstration this will work and uh, the, um, the speeds are fine with class 4 as well. So let's talk about SD card readers because I've had some problems in the past. Uh, I've owned at least I think like three SD card readers that have completely uh, just stopped working after a while, so I can't really recommend those. Uh, for setting up my SD card, I have used a camera, a very old Samsung camera, and that worked okay, but it was really, really slow, like around 3 megabytes per second transfer speed. So you definitely want something better than that uh, if you want to move a lot of games or just have a lot of patience, because it took a very long time to copy everything over. Uh, recently I've been using something different. I've been using my uh, my LTE stick. This is my old uh, LTE mobile internet stick I've been using a couple of years ago and it actually has an SD card reader built in so that's very very handy and it's I mean it's a good quality one. It's a Huawei so it uh, shouldn't be anything wrong with that. It's been working fine as an SD card reader. It's actually a lot quicker as well. It's 10 megabytes per second versus uh, the 3 megabytes on the camera. So just take this off and the SD card just simply goes in there. I'll be using this SD card reader for the test demonstration. So here we are at my desktop and I've already created a folder which contains all the programs we're going to need to create the SD card for the GDMU. You can find these in the description, I've already uh, extracted them. GDMUSD, this is the manager program, it will copy games, it will delete them, it will create the menu to optimize load times. This is Rebuild GDI. I've talked about it in my previous video and it does have some benefits. It will reduce the size of GDI files by removing the uh, access empty space essentially, but it will cause compatibility issues, but we will still go through it and uh, create a rebuilt GDI file as well, and GUI format, which will format larger than 32 gigabyte SD cards. Basically in Windows you can't format a larger than 32 gigabyte SD card to FAT32. You have to use a special program, and this is what it's for. And I have two copies of what's Shemu here in the two major formats, CDI and GDI. CDI being the format created so that you can burn it to a CD of 800 megabytes of size, they might be tweaked, there might be files missing from it. GDI is generally better, it's the it's like a direct uh, rip of a GD-ROM and it will be obviously larger in size. Uh, so let's get to it. So I'm going to start off by formatting the SD card. Since it's only 4 gigabytes, I can just use Windows' built-in formatting tool. Uh, but this will not work above 32 gigabytes. It will only let you do XFAT and that doesn't work for GDMU. So you'll have to use GUI format. So set it to FAT32. Allocation unit size 32 kilobytes. The bigger the better because you'll get higher read speed. Uh, most people have a lot of issues with slow SD cards. That's probably because they're using the wrong allocation unit size, a very small one. Uh, you want to get 32 kilobytes or even better 64 kilobytes. It will take up more space on the SD card because the ends of files will still be filling up the whole 64, gigabyte, uh, 64 kilobytes or 32 kilobytes on the SD card, but uh, it will, like I said, read faster. So we want to go for the highest option and that's pretty much it. Just go ahead and format it. And we're done. We can start copying games onto it, but let's check out GUI format here. So this is a very cool little program which will allow you to format any, uh, basically any type of media to, uh, to FAT32, any size, it's, it's great. So, well actually there's probably like some sort of limitation, like 2 terabytes perhaps, but 
Uh, those SD cards don't really exist outside of China and those aren't really real anyways. So, basically it's gonna most likely recognize your SD card, but make sure you select the right drive. Allocation unit size. I think some people got confused by this as well because this is showing it in bytes instead of kilobytes. This is 512 bytes. Uh, this is 65,536 bytes. This is basically 64 kilobytes. So that's what you want to choose. The highest setting and you can name it whatever you want. And start. Yes. Because it is being used by another process. I think I need to close... Uh, that. Let me try again. Yep, that worked. Okay. Cool. That's it. Now we're ready to copy some games onto it. Alright, so let's start with GDMU SD. This is a fairly simple program. It's very nice by Matt Sheep. Uh, you can basically just add an image by pressing the plus button and browsing it, removing an image by pressing the X button. It's that simple. You can also move games up and down in the list. Basically, it creates uh, the right format for, for GDMU, uh, which is numbered folders. That's pretty much it. You will see. So, but I can also just go ahead and drag and drop. So we want the GDI file from the uh, GDI. Basically, these are just track information. This contains all the data on the disk. This is just a smaller file that tells the system where the data is located and that's pretty much it. Just drag and drop. It shows the correct size, 1.1 gigabyte. And CDI, same thing, drag and drop. CDI files might take a little bit of time to process. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's when you start burning them, I'm not quite sure. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. And you need to make sure that you click menu and hit save. Do you want to customize your menu? You can uh, basically decide if you want to change the names of the games, but you don't really have to. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this one. And that's it. And you can just go ahead and... As you can see, number one is gonna be always GD menu, so that means that all one, it always boots into the GD menu where you can select your game. So that's very convenient. Uh, if you didn't have that, it would always just boot into the first game and then you would have to skip to the next game, which is a bit more complicated and not, not really worth it. And then you just click done and then we'll start putting the games onto the SD card. First the, uh, the menu and then the games. And now real quickly I'm going to show you Rebuild GDI. This is also very simple. You go ahead and drag and drop. There we go. And then click rebuild. It will disappear, but it pops up with a command file. Uh, sorry, a command prompt that will tell you what it's doing at the moment. It's creating all these directories. In the temporary folder and then it'll put them all into the, uh, the rebuild GDI file. I've actually encountered a couple GDI files that did not work with this program. Uh, you have to make sure that you pretty much have the ones that do. <laughs> I mean it's easier said than done but uh, some of them just uh, just do not work. And like I said, do not even try this program with games that use Windows CE. It will only work with uh, with most of of the uh, of the native Dreamcast games, but none of the Windows CE games worked at all. They would just, I believe, lock up on the Windows CE screen or just crash somewhere. Now it's writing. This thing is going in the background. And this one is done. The rebuild is done. 
and that's pretty much it. Now let's take a look at what it has created. It will always copy the files into the rebuild GDI folder. And that's right here, what's Shemmu? Now if you take a look at it, it will basically, now it's disk.gdi. And if we take a look at the size, it's 774 megabytes, which is funnily enough, this, I believe that's the same size as the CDI, isn't it? Wasn't it always, wasn't it also, yeah, it's 771, whereas this one is uh, 774. So you can see that probably this CDI file is not missing anything for this game. And we have significantly reduced the size of the image, but we're still working with the GDI file, so that's that's nice. This program, Rebuild GDI, is mostly actually used for uh, when you have an ID hard drive on uh, in your Dreamcast and use... Uh, what's that program called? I think it's called uh, Dream... Dream Shell, yeah, Dream Shell, that's the one. So for that, people like to use the, uh, the Rebuild GDI to, to reduce the size of the image. So once it's done copying, this is what the file structure looks like on the SD card. And now we can open the program again, and you can see the games over here. And now we're going to add the rebuilt GDI as well to it. As you can see, it rebuilt the menu to update the list and add the new game that we've just added. So it will burn the first game again, and then it will switch over to the fourth game to continue from there. So it doesn't have to rebuild the whole list the whole list of games every time you want to add the game. Obviously that would take forever if you have a lot of games and it would wear out the SD card as well. Looks like I should have pressed enter before clicking done because the name stayed what's Shenmue. Once the copying has finished you're pretty much done and you can go play some games so enjoy playing Dreamcast games and I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next video or maybe on one of my Twitch streams. Take care.